Number three then, can just three marks, carry out this integration. Now, you can do any differentiation just by following the rules for differentiation. When it comes to integrations, you can only integrate things when you recognise the results. So the whole problem really is to try and rearrange the terms to produce results that you recognise. One of the ones that you can see hidden in here, or what the way it used to be was, you knew that the derivative of inverse sine is 1 upon the square root of 1 minus x squared. So if you could rearrange things to have this in it, rearrange integrals to have this in it, you know the result would have been this. And normally that's what you do here. Try and remove all those numbers to leave something like this. However, there are various other arrangements that are known results. So many that you can't remember them all. But you've got an extra one here. In the formula sheet, you've given a further one beyond this, which says, if you see this instead, if you see 1 upon, not just 1 minus x squared, but a squared minus x squared, then you know it comes from inverse sine of x upon a, plus the c, of course. So that's what you're going to be doing here. You're going to be trying to rearrange this to look like that. Well, that just means pulling numbers out of this. I don't want that 16 there because I just wanted to say x squared. So you'll take the 16 out. It'd be better if I didn't have the 2 on top. If I'm pulling things out, I might as well pull out that 2 on top as well. So there's only one left behind, taking out a factor. And I want to take 16 out of this expression. I'll just write it down here. If you've got 9 minus 16x squared, you could take the 16 out of that, even though it's not a common factor, because that would certainly just leave x squared. But of course, when you take 16 out as a factor, what's happened is everything has then been divided by 16. So that goes down to that, and that goes down to 9 sixteenths. So you can pull out the 16 to leave it just saying x squared. There's the first plan. However, that 16 is still inside of the square root. Maybe I'll show that bit first of all. So 16 times 9 upon 16 minus x squared. Then root 16 is 4. Pull that out. So now it's 2 upon 4, which is just a half. And you've got 1 upon the square root of, and then these are the parts. I'm just left with this bracket now. I've taken out the root 16. And of course, that's a perfect square. That's the square of 3 quarters. 3 quarters squared minus x squared dx. That's the pattern you were trying to get. Just pull out the 16. May as well take the 2 out while you're with it. And you're left with this. Now you just follow that pattern there. However, how were the marks allocated? Because they were allocated as identify the standard integral you were going, you were aiming for. Difficult one to identify. Suppose that's indicated by trying to take the 16 out. The next mark is for actually getting this in the form of that standard integral, that recognisable result that you know. So that would be this mark here. And then the final mark is just for putting it back into that. So you've got half of, according to this, if you've got this, you've got inverse sine of x upon whatever this is, inverse sine of x, well, I've written it now, upon 3 quarters, plus c, which means I have to write it all over again. Half of inverse sine of, and of course that will be 4x upon 3 plus c for the final mark. I'll pop that in a wee bracket. If instead you decide to go for this original simpler pattern, it would have taken a little bit more work, not an awful lot more. Difference being in this case, you'd been wanting to make the first term a 1, not the x term having a coefficient of 1. So that you'd be taking that 9 out of the expression to leave 1 minus 16x squared upon 9 in the bracket. So being a square root, that would have turned into two-thirds of the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus 16x squared upon 9, which you would have rewritten as 4x upon 3 squared dx. So now it's in this form, where of course you've now got a function of a function. It's not a function of x, it's a function of four-thirds of x. So when you carry out that integration, it will turn back into inverse sine of what you've got, 4x upon 3. 
But since it was a function of a function, you'll have to divide by that 4 upon 3. I'll put that at the front. Dividing by 4 upon 3, of course, means multiplying by 3 upon 4. Don't forget the plus C. Which then again comes to half of inverse sine of 4x upon 3 plus C, as before.